Hey guys, Sinister here, welcome back. Um, this is going to be part 2 of my Learn to Fly series. So, needless to say, this one is going to expect you to have completed the first part of my Learn to Fly series. Um, and realistically, you're going to want to have spent probably at least 10 hours in the editor before we go on to the next part. This video is going to be quite a bit shorter than my first one, as it's really just taking everything we learned in the first one, which is the basics of flying, which is landing, taking off, turning, moving, all that good stuff. Um, and then actually applying it into a combat situation. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a scenario. I'm going to have a link in the description um, as to the specific scenario that I use. And I'm going to show you two different ways to open it. And then we're going to go into the scenario and show you what it's all about and what to do. Um, this is really just going to be taking everything you learned and just making you into be a more finessed pilot. And to be just a bit more confident when you're actually engaged with targets. Um... This is not an advanced flying guide. I don't actually plan on doing one of them because you really don't need it um, at this moment in time and you certainly don't need it to play on the Evade Nanex server that I play on. Now, obviously, as you become more competent in the role, you will get better, but right now, we're not gonna worry about that. Um, so let's jump into it after a quick intro. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. Okay guys, so this particular scenario is actually expected to be played in multiplayer, but it can be loaded up in single player. It's a little bit more buggy if you do it in single player, but it's absolutely fine for your purposes. I'm just going to show you to open up in single player, then we're going to open it up in multiplayer, which is the way it's expected to be played, and then we're going to go through what needs to be done. So in order to open up the scenario, you're going to go to single player scenarios, and the one we are looking for here is... Is this one helicopter training transport this is what you're going to want to do so as you can see I've done this many many times so I'm just going to restart this scenario and go from there all right we're into the game I uh, will go into this in a bit more detail in a moment but let's show you how to load up the game how it's intended to be loaded up I'll see you back on the home screen all right, so we're now back in the home screen. Um, in order to load up this scenario in multiplayer all you need to do is go into multiplayer server browser lan so local area network lan up here and click host new session name it whatever you want here just click host server and off you go so as you can see i have a lot of uh, different scenarios and stuff here but what you're just going to go is into helicopter training multiplayer that's the exact same one that we selected from the single player menu but this one is designed to be played in a multiplayer so click play select your slot as you can see there's actually this is one of those scenarios where if you can actually invite your friends and you can have multiple people playing but in this case we are just going to go into slot one and click ok alright so this is the this is the map. Um, rather than you know go through everything that you can see here, there are some tips. Um, there are some tips here that you can go through by yourself, but I'm actually just going to talk through them as we go through them in the game. Um, it's probably a lot easier that way. So I'll just close out this by clicking continue, which will actually load up the, um, which will load up the, the mission file. So what you see in the mission file is every single helicopter that you can run. In Stray Gaming's Invade and Annex server is here. So you have the Little Bird, you have an Orca, you have a Ghost Hawk, you have a Huron, you have a Blackfish, you have a, um, a Hellcat, you have a Mohawk, you have a Taru, and you have a Zion Transport. They are every single helicopter you can play and learn in Stray Gaming's Invade and Annex server. So this is the perfect mission to get started. What is the mission? Okay, so this mission is a transport focused mission. However, when you pick, when you get into your helicopter, you'll be given an objective to pick up a team. So in this case, we're picking up Alpha 2-1. And the landing zones are combat zones, which means that there are enemy infantry attacking you when you land. There is no, to be clear, there is no AA. So while it is a combat zone, it's a very light combat zone. The idea behind it is it's to get your heart rate up and to get you in a situation where you're not comfortable. 
and it just adds so you'll see bullets hitting your your window there'll be people trying to shoot you but very rarely will they actually kill you so where should you start um if you completed part one you should be relatively familiar in flying the hummingbird which is this little um helicopter over here um however at this moment in time you can choose whichever helicopter you want to learn to fly in I personally actually suggest learning to fly in this thing, which is the Hellcat. This is personally my favorite helicopter. The reason I suggest you learn to fly in the Hellcat is pretty simple. First and foremost, it handles really well. Very similar to the Hummingbird. It's quite light, it moves at a very similar speed, and it, it's slightly heavier and slightly bigger. However, and this is a big one, it has flares. We're gonna talk about flares in my in part three the next part but this thing has flares and it is a great um starter helicopter to learn to fly however for the sake of this scenario assuming that you are a brand new pilot and you've only learned to fly in the hummingbird in the editor up to this point we are going to fly in the hummingbird so let's just go through everything all right so um you have a lot of options here. Um, what all we're going to do is we're just going to get in as a pilot because we already have a mission. We already have an objective, so we don't need to request a new one. This menu will look different in single player as you won't have the option to do a lot of these things. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get in as the pilot. And we're going to repeat all the steps we did from step one of our um, of, of this tutorial. I'm going to turn on the minimap with control and M. Whoops. And I'm going to fly to the objective over here, which is one kilometer away. So I'll see you guys when we get there, or as we get closer, and you'll see the difference between this and the editor. Okay, so as you can see, as we get closer straight away, there's smoke on the ground. So that's generally the area you want to land in. So it's a good visual indicator, and this is very similar to how the Invade Nanex server works as well. So we're just gonna land as close to smoke as we can. And it was a pretty clean landing. And as you can see, this rifleman is now automatically going to get into my helicopter. And as soon as he gets in, I get a new objective. We take off. I have to drop Alpha off somewhere else, which is 1.8 kilometers away. So let's just fly there. Okay, so I'm gonna take this landing a little bit different to how I did my last one. I'm gonna come in at a much higher angle and much slower, just similar to how you guys probably would be on your first couple of attempts. And as you can see, I'm about to land 50 meters away, pitch my nose up to slow down, Z to descend, and I have dropped Mr. Bravo off. And now I will get a new mission to pick up uh, Alpha 22, who is 700 meters away. As you can see, this is a much different landing zone. I need to be very slow here because I'm going to be navigating some buildings. Remember what I said in my first video, you don't have to get exactly on your target. You can get as close as possible and the AI will run to you. So I'm just going to get as close as possible without destroying my helicopter. Middle of the road here looks perfect. And as soon as I touch down, the AI are going to run to me over here. And as you can see, they're coming towards me now. Uh, in this case, it's gonna take me a little bit longer to actually land and take off because there's more people getting on board. It looks like there's one, two, three, there's six people getting on board this time. So I have to wait for all of them to get on before the next objective starts. And now I have to drop them off. So unfortunately, we haven't had any um, hostile landing zones yet where there's actually people shooting at the helicopter um, so what I might do is I might just uh, cut to the next part of the video where it's going to show me where I go into a landing zone where I'm actually getting shot and I'll pick the video up there for you guys then
Oh, there you go. So this is actually a scenario where there are enemies shooting me. So you can see some infantry, you can see some tracer bullets actually going ab above the helicopter. So this is one of the landing zones where there's people shooting you and you just need to try and not die. There's basically a couple of infantry just lying around and you just need to try and avoid them. It's just to get the heart rate up a little bit. It's not too difficult. Um, but because it's dynamic, you never really know what kind of landing zone you're going to go into, especially, you know, in that case, you're in the middle of a field. So you're very open um, if there was enemy infantry there on a live server. Uh, so I'm just going to do this final drop off and then uh, we're going to go into the next part of the video. Oh, that was close. All right, so if your vehicle is damaged or, you know, you just want to change um, what helicopter you're in, you can either crash it on the ground or simply click re uh, respawn vehicle in, the, in this scroll wheel here and it will destroy your vehicle and the mission won't end which is one of the key differences between playing this in multiplayer and playing this on single player um so at this point that's it you've learned to fly to different dynamic points you've learned to pick people up um, at this point it's really choosing different um, helicopters so the orca for example or if if it bugs out and you know this this dynamic objective isn't here you can simply request a new mission and that mission is now gone and we've now got this one now apparently this lz according to the side chat here is hot with an aa i have never actually done an aa landing on this uh, mission so i'm actually going to do this one and see what happens so i'll see you guys on the other side and there you go i got shot down I had no idea there was AA in this mission. So that actually says a lot. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna fly the Hellcat this time, which is this one over here that I suggested to use instead of the Hummingbird or a little bit more comfortable. And you're gonna see the reason why very shortly. So let me do that now. And so first and foremost, on the top right hand side, you will see CM. Um, I've changed it to single uh, by pressing Control and C, but you will default to burst. And what this is, is this is your flares, which means that when you get locked on, you can actually dodge missiles. So to deploy a flare, you press C, and we're gonna test this out um, at this landing zone and see does it work. I'm gonna go a little bit higher so that I have a chance to actually dodge the AA. I probably went a little bit too high um, in, my, in my last one. So I'm just gonna try and go a little bit higher um, and then see do I get locked on and see can I actually avoid the um, rocket that comes at me Looks like I'm not getting shot this time very sad Maybe if I do a pickup though, um, I will get uh, a a a rocket so I'll do that I'll pick up and go to the next landing zone and see maybe is there a rocket then I don't see any infantry here so I wonder how I'm meant to pick up maybe the mission bugged out because I changed the mission oh there is someone there apologies didn't see it in the smoke and now we're going somewhere else over here whoop and I'm dead don't do that but yeah that that's it guys that's the basics of the mission and um, I didn't actually show you how to deploy a flare so I'll just get up in the air um, in any any of these helicopters that have flares and just show you what to do um, you get into the Mohawk over here as a pilot so let's just get up in the air and I'll show you how to deploy a flare um, we'll do it from third person so you can see what it looks like
All right, so we're up in the air. If you get locked on, um, you'll know if you get locked on. Trust me, it makes a, a absolute crazy sound on your radar on the right hand side. Lights up like crazy. Press C, C, and you can deploy flares like that. And then if you do flares and then do an evasive maneuver like this, and not crash, uh, you may actually be able to avoid any guided missiles that are locked onto you. Um, so in order to conclude the video here. Um, I can really only give you estimates, but at this point, this is really where you're refining your ability to land and to deliver infantry troops safely to the area of operations, which is your primary goal as a transport pilot on Invade Nanix. That is exclusively what this mission focuses on, and it uses all the assets that are available to you on the Stray Gaming Invade Nanix server. So it is the perfect mission to really get comfortable with what you're doing. Yeah, so uh, I think, you know, you're probably talking at least 10 hours per helicopter. Um, and, you know, you pretty much don't want to step onto the Invade Nanix server unless you're comfortable flying the Hummingbird, the Hellcat, and the Ghost Hawk. So I'll show you what one the Ghost Hawk is. Um, and then once you're comfortable flying them and landing them at different zones, you're probably able to log on to the server and do some transport you will get shot down you will make some mistakes that's okay these things happen but just try and learn from them and trying to improve because at the end of the day when you're a transport pilot people are depending on you to get them to where they need to be so it is definitely um it is definitely worth learning to practice this mohawk it's a little big um but it carries a lot of people um so it's quite good but it is a little bit harder to fly so i'll just show you what the ghost hawk looks like and this is at, at these basically the three you're going to want to learn at an absolute minimum so there's the hellcat you're going you're going to want to learn how to fly that you're going to want to fly the hummingbird which is this one here and the one beside us is the ghost hawk it, uh, you always recognize it because it always has two mounted turrets on the side of it so you're going to want to fly you're going to want to learn to fly this as well um, what you'll notice in this video is, especially when I started off, my landings were a lot smoother than what yours are going to be. That's fine. I've got over 100 hours as a transport pilot in this game, so it's unsurprising that I understand how to land better than you will. That will come at time. Don't worry about it. My landing is called a J-hook. It's a bit more advanced, but there's plenty of videos out there learning how to do a J-hook, but don't worry about them right now. Just learn to get up in the air and safely land at an objective in this mission at least 10 hours in the Hummingbird, at least 10 hours in the Hellcat, and at least 10 hours in this. And now once you have your 30 hours, plus you know your 10 hours in the editor that you did in video one, you'll be good. You'll be good to go, you'll be able to get in there, and you'll be able to have fun. Again, it will take a little bit more time and a little bit more practice before you're really ready to jump on at peak time, but this is just the starting point. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, please let me know if you've got any comments or you have any feedback. Um, the third and final part of this video will be a little bit longer. It will be basically everything you need to know as a transport pilot on the Invade Nanix server. And I may do a bonus fourth video, which is just some general tips and tricks that I've learned for over 100 hours on the server as a transport pilot that will hopefully... Um, help you just become a better person and feel a bit more comfortable in the pilot seat. At the end of the day, we all make mistakes, these things happen, but learning from them and being a better person, that's the most important. See you.